Hello, and welcome once again to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by DentalWebContent.com and New Patients Incorporated. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated. Along with me once again is my friend and partner and the president of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to our podcast. Hey, Mark, I hear you're back from Maine. How's that going? I am fine. I am back. Um, The dragonflies hatched the third day we were there. So for three days, we got carried away by black flies and mosquitoes. But on the third day, the sun shined and the dragonflies all hatched off the lake. And you can see them coming. It's like that. Remember that movie Birds when we were little? Oh, yeah, yeah. With the big flock of birds and they were like biting each other and biting the people and driving everybody crazy. That's sort of what it was like. Only the dragonflies are your friend and they just run around into the woods and they chew on every biting insect there is. And then you stand there on your lawn saying, ha, 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 ha. And, and, and then you can actually work outside without slapping yourself silly. So that's how it was. <laughs> great, great explanation. Thank you very much. For so those who have never been to the North Woods, that's, that's kind of commonplace. You basically just stay inside until you start seeing the dragonflies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, here we are. Um, how about we talk about search engine optimization, SEO? What do you think? Uh, huge topic, huge topic. I know. Everybody's talking about it, and it kind of uh, it is confusing, especially if if you don't understand the different aspects of it. Um. And, and why in the hell would you, right? Like, yeah. it's sort of like me and you figuring out, like, why does a doctor use a rubber dam? Yeah. And honestly, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> right? I really, I don't care, okay? Well, well let, me, let, me, let me tell you a short little story. I used to try and keep up with SEO back in the early days right. when it was in its infancy. And I thought I was pretty on top of it, but very quickly... I just threw my hands up and said, yeah, you can't, I can't do this. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a full-time job. It's insane, right? It's, it's, it has become relatively, ins- it's, all, it's also very intertwined. Like everything matters, right? right? In the old days, we used to have counters on the bottom of the website that said visitor 107, you know, yeah. visitor 108. And basically, that's what Google looked at. And if you had more visitors, then you must be more relevant. So they would stick you up on the top of a search, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that was the old, old, we're probably dating ourselves right now, but, um, uh, you know, obviously it's gotten a hell of a lot more involved, but it's not as involved as some who are trying to steal your money, um, make it out to be. Okay. So, so let's, let's just dive into the three main aspects of proper and effective SEO. Before we do that, though, I I, I do have to caution the, the listeners. <clears throat> Some listeners will think, "Wow, well, if I just have a good SEO person, I'll take care of all my new patient needs for the rest of my career." And that's never happened to one dentist ever. And you won't be the first one. So SEO is not the end all. SEO and, and optimizing your website for consumer search is, is not the only thing you should do for your marketing. However, if it's done correctly and it's done consistently at a reasonable price, it will pay off. It will create a return basically for the rest of your career. And when you run across things like that, you try to take advantage of them for, for, you know, if you're a marketing company, that's what you, that, that, that's the Holy grail. Something that is reasonably cost, highly predictable market to market, um, that will create a return year over year. That's gold, man. I mean, that's, Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, like, like we, we joke, we dream we, about that. We drool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so SEO, what should it cost you? You know, um, 
here's the way to look at it. <clears throat> if you're in an average market, maybe a little more competitive than average market, I don't know, seven, eight grand a year. I think that's probably reasonable, probably fair. So it shouldn't be 24, 28, 33. We had a doctor who was spending 50 grand a year on SEO. It was unbelievable. And he was in Kansas. So I don't know. I don't even know what these what's, people were doing. What's that about? I know. I, know, I have no idea. But anyway, <clears throat> so right away, that should tell you about what you should spend. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Depends on the results you get. But somewhere in there. What should they do for that money? Well, there's really, there's three things, three pieces of the SEO pie. The first and the most obvious is probably the most technical, which is the on, which is the off page SEO. This is where you, you tell Google where the important stuff is on your website so that Google can easily find it and index it as it comes and grabs your website and takes it back to their server to diagnose. That's what Google does, by the way. They copy your website, take it back, run their, um, run their software through it to determine how relevant you are, and they give you a rank. That's basically what they do. So <clears throat> that programming, alt tags, meta tags, the programming, the, the technical part of SEO is done by either a programmer or an SEO specialist and in, in reaction to Google changing their algorithm. So once Google changes their algorithm, and Google's been changing it about once every five to seven months lately. So when Google changes it, your SEO person should immediately go understand the changes and then redevelop um, that programming language in the back end of your website um, accordingly. In, in other words, if Google doesn't want you to do something, don't do it. If Google does want you to do something or you can exploit something on your website, then go ahead and exploit it. As long as it's okay by Google, do it. Okay, so those changes happen, <clears throat> you know, maybe it'll take one or two man month, you know, months worth of SEO work, uh, you know, once every five to seven months. So there's four of your months of the year right there. Now, the next piece of SEO, because once you're done doing those, uh, let me back up one step. Once you're done doing the programming side, uh, after Google changes their algorithms, you don't really have to change that after that until Google changes again. You can pretty much leave it, right? So then another piece of the SEO pie are website changes that the client requests, coupled with what's called on-page or content changes. Google likes content changes. They like to see words change. They like to see paragraphs change. They like to see additions, subtractions, just something different. Because what they do is they come grab your website, take it back to their server, come grab your website a month from now, take it back to their server, and they compare the two. So they want to see things evolving, things changing. So on-page content changes plus any customer requests, like I changed my office hours, uh, Marie's having a baby, we have a new hygienist, we have a new assistant, whatever. Websites are pieces of software. They're, they're, they're things that are never done. You're going to be evolving your website for the rest of your career. Um, you should anticipate that plan for it and just automatically agree that, yeah, of course. I mean, if I had a, if I had a storefront on Main Street, I wouldn't, leave, I wouldn't de decorate my front window and leave it that way for the rest of my career. I'd have the st stalest store on Main Street. So, you're always changing things um, within the content of your website, and that helps um, your SEO and your, and your organic ranking. Um, social media, uh, properly connecting your blog, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, your LinkedIn accounts, properly setting them up so that you can cross post to each one, properly naming those posts, and um, all of those things will gain you organic juice. Um, it's actually kind of amazing. Some of our offices, you'll 
you know, and these aren't in, you know, grossly densely populated areas, but some of them you'll see, uh, you know, you type in Invisalign dentist town name and there'll be, you know, four of the first 10 things that show up are actually our client. But one of them is the website. One of them is the Google plus business page. One of them is the, their LinkedIn account. And one of them is a Facebook post about Invisalign. One of them might be the page on their website called Invisalign.html. Yeah, one of them might be the video that's on their website as well. Exactly, a video. So all those, all those things, um, they all, people say, uh, people say all the time, you know, um, you can do SEO once and forget it. That's true as long as Google never changes. Right, exactly. You know, Mark, there's, there's probably a, a, some, some dentists out there that, that are wondering, you know, what, what, else, what can they do personally to move, move their SEO along and, and, and help their SEO specialist uh, get them more, uh, a better ranking? And can we cover that after the little break here? Sure. We'll be right back. Hi, Mark Dilatush here. I want to talk to you about NPI Concierge. This is the next big thing in dentistry. Today, about 2,000 dentists have it installed, and in five years, 50,000 dentists are going to have it installed. The dentists who start early will be the dentists who benefit the most. Concierge is real-time online scheduling integration between your practice's website and your practice management software. You have total control over what new and existing patients can and cannot schedule. If you'd like to see it for yourself, it takes about 20 minutes. Perhaps we can do it over a lunchtime. Send an email to demo at newpatientsinc.com. Don't be the last dentist in your market to do this. Be the first. Okay, welcome back. So, um, yeah, let's talk about that, Mark. Um, you know, what, what can the client do to help their, uh, their SEO specialist? On their- um, yeah, well see some clients don't want to do this they just want to hand this off right right? (laughs) and they just want to say i gave you eight hundred dollars you do everything and i'm not involved and whatever okay and that's fine we yeah it is okay we we hey somebody came to me on my off hours and said mark i want you to do you know some stuff on your business or think about you know and i just want to disconnect completely and refresh i'm going to say hell no as well so we're, we're not picking on you but you need that content somewhere and one thing i've learned or one thing we've learned over all these years is there are dental website companies who don't have a clue how to communicate the benefits of dentistry to dental consumers yeah, you know, that's their websites sure. are beautiful. Their websites are the graphic user interface. They slide up and down. They look great on your phone. They're flipping awesome. But they have no clue how to communicate the benefits of dentistry to the dental consumer. Okay. Where this is all leading is, is if you're a dentist and you want to help yourself, what you need is content. Whether that's a written word, a series of written words, a paragraph, a web page, a video, a topical video on a certain subject, whatever it is, you need content to hand your website developer. Okay? You need content for your social media. Your thirst for content should be never ending if you want to be part of the process. I will tell you for sure, I'm Sharon Swan is the head of our internet department. She and her group, um, You know how, you know, you have the dentist listening to this. You have special patients that you just, they they make your day when they walk in your office. And for Sharon and her group, the SEO clients that we have that make her day are the ones that come to her with unique content, right? Um, Right. Great testimonial video or something like that, right? Yeah, testimonial video or a little story about, how Mary, the assistant's six-year-old son, hit a home run in T-ball, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, you know, with dental web content, we've, we've done the work for you from the dental standpoint, so that's already done. It's already at your disposal. But it's the human side that, that a marketing company can't do for you. That's the content. <clears throat> um, that's the content that, 
that really <clears throat> Sharon and her group really appreciate when, a, when a, uh, an SEO client sends it to them. Because it has to be a mix or you'll lose your audience. You'll lose your blog audience if it's nothing about dentistry, if nothing but dentistry. You'll definitely lose your social media audience if all you communicate is just dentistry. The dentistry side should be about 30% of your total content. The other 70% has to come to you from you. It has to come from your heart. So if, you know, Howie's question was, what can a customer do on their own? Create stories. Create yeah. video. Create, you know, when I say video, testimonial videos are fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with them. You just, I mean, they're easily over, <clears throat> they're easily overdone. Okay, you just don't want them to sit there and do testimonial video after testimonial video after testimonial video. Pretty soon, you know, your page is full and you say, what the hell am I going to do with this next video? So, um, yeah, that's what an SEO customer um, can do for themselves if they so choose. If they don't choose, then, yeah, I mean, your SEO company should – um, at least keep all your social media alive with some dental content or at least relevant content to the dental industry. Um, all that stuff, the, on, the, the behind the scenes programming, the on page content changing, um, the customer requests for changes that happen organically, no matter, I mean, everybody's going to have changes to their website probably every other month or every three months. Anyway, just a normal course of business. Um, and the social media connection and interaction, all those things all lend themselves to good quality SEO that should pay off in a return at a reasonable cost. So that'll be your, your definition of SEO. Now, <clears throat> I'll go a little bit deeper into this because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, yes, we do SEO for websites, but we only do SEO for websites we build. And this is where <clears throat> building websites and SEO are very intertwined and I'll give you a very easy example of why if we were to do search engine optimization on a website that did not have its own individual page for let's say sedation Invisalign implants um, children's dentistry and sure. ortho same-day dentistry Let's say we didn't have individual pages for all those websites. It was like one of those websites that you see all over the place where they have a, a button that says services and 4,000 miles scroll, right? <laughs> yeah. So we would immediately be at a complete disadvantage because we build our website with, with individual pages and those individual pages are named appropriately, uh, strategically. Um, and those become keywords. And when Google sees those as individual pages and they see those in a keyword or a key phrase, guess what Google does? Google says, wow, this guy has expertise in this keyword or key phrase. They, look, they have a whole page devoted just to it. That page has this much content. The content has changed. It has these videos. The videos are being watched. Let's focus the next person who looks for dental services in this market on this guy. See what I'm saying? Okay, so building how you build a website has an awful lot to do with how your SEO works. It's a prerequisite to build your website correctly. Doctors come to us and they'll, they'll say, well, you know, Mark, I, I love my website. I just built it a year and a half ago, and I, but I, want, I talked to whoever, Lori, whoever you, you talk to, and she said that they love your SEO department, and it's, you know, can't you just do SEO on my website? And unfortunately, my answer is no. Because by the time we unbuild your website and rebuild it the way it's supposed to be built, the way you know our SEO team wants it, we might as well build you a new website. Okay? Yeah, that's essentially what we would have to do anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. and the doctors listening to this, imagine a, a new patient shows up with 
top eight teeth prepped for veneers. And the patient comes to you and says, here, I want you to, I want you to put on the veneers. I got them in this box. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what lab they were, they came from. Okay. <laughs> and after you stick them on my prep teeth, you're responsible for them. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay, that, that's what asking someone else to do SEO on your website is like. And if they're an honest company, they're going to look at you and give you a big hug and a kiss and say, we wish we could. We really do wish we could, but we know we can't do a best job if we do it with your website. So we have to either decline or build you a new website. That makes sense. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Yeah. Um, SEO is one of those. It's one of those subjects where you know enough to be dangerous, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know just enough. You know enough to be dangerous to yourself. It's That's almost what... <laughs> like the opposite sex, right? Well, you know, like if you're a guy, you know just enough about women to be dangerous, right? <laughs> but you don't get the full story for quite a few years, right? Same thing if you're a woman and, and looking for a man, you know, that kind of thing. That's, that's what SEO is like. But so it becomes this mystery. Well, it doesn't have to be a mystery. It doesn't have to be dangerous. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be any of those bad things. It, um, and it certainly could and will and has proven over the years um, to provide a constant, steady, low number of good, solid, quality new patients every month. Not a gigantic number. You're not going to do SEO and all of a sudden get 50 additional new patients a month. It is just not going to happen. Get that out of your head. What you're investing in is, you know, Two, four, five a month, somewhere in there. You know, in, a, in, a, in an average market, average revenues, average scope, average hours, average everything, somewhere in there. So from an investment standpoint, it's a pretty solid one. And I'll, I'll leave you with, with this. I remember back in the day, Howie, I know you do too. I remember back in the day when the doctors would jockey for position with their yellow pages, right? Right. Okay. So here's how it worked. The yellow page rep would go to Bob, the dentist, Bob, and say, Bob, I can get you the, the front first page in the dentist section of the yellow pages for $2,500 a month. Bob says, that sounds like it's worth it. Okay. I'm in. So the yellow page rep leaves Bob's office and goes over to Sally's office, says, Sally, Bob's going to buy the first page for 2500 bucks. I think I might be able to get it for you for 3000 Sally says, oh, I don't know. That doesn't sound, okay, I'll do it. So Sally, Sally's now, Sally's in for $3,000. So the rep leaves Sally's office and goes to Dr. Nick's office. Says, Nick, Sally and Bob are going to have the first two positions of the yellow pages unless you take action. I can get you the first page for $4,000. Actually, I can sell you a double truck. A two page. No, seriously, this is how it worked. This is I know, exactly I've been in on this how it worked, okay? I can get you a double truck for $6,500. Normally, it'd be $9,000, but if, if you'll do business with me today, Nick, I'll get it to you for $6,500. And Nick says, oh, my God, that's an enormous amount of money. But Dr. Nick, you won't be anywhere near the front page because of Dr. Sally and Dr. Bob. And Nick panics and says, okay, here, take all my money. $6,500 a month for first position in the yellow pages, which is today's equivalent to what? Google. <laughs> okay. So stop whining to your SEO company if they're charging you 600 a month. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to that first page of the yellow pages, which is now called the internet. Okay. They're not exploiting you monetarily. 
They're not stealing your money. Well, the reputable ones are absolutely positively not stealing your money. There are some disreputable ones that probably are. I'll give you that much, okay? But dentists used to line up to spend five times as much money to get into the front page of the yellow pages. So look at it that way. Yeah, it's actually made things cheaper. Google It's a hell of a lot cheaper now to position yourself than it ever used to be. So, yeah. Well, all right. Uh, we hope this uh, podcast was helpful to you. We're going to close down here for now. And uh, we look forward to being with you again very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye now. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast today. You can find more podcasts on our YouTube channel, on Stitcher, and iTunes. Also on our websites, dentalwebcontent.com and newpatientsinc.com.